These are the displays which might launch careers. This is science for the real world. It might change our lives. For example, there's Morton Groening's Happaratus, or Power Glove. It could revolutionize the world of sculpture by allowing hand sculpting of wood and stone for the first time. For them, it's about being as close as they can to the material, like really being intimate with the stone or with the wood, and really understanding those curves that they're creating as they are creating them. Then there's a brand new way of harvesting wind power. Imagine thousands of these stuck to a skyscraper or lining an underground train tunnel. And this vibrating pen is designed to help sufferers of Parkinson's disease, whose hands stiffen as the disease takes hold. When you tilt the pen to write, it engages the vibrational motors and it enables you to write clearer and smoother by providing a vibrational feedback to your muscles and it makes the pen traverse across the paper easier and it also uh, reduces the stiffness in the muscles. The innovations on display here, if you like, are a combination of art and science. This stuff has to work and it has to look good at the same time. The students are taught to understand the commercial applications of what they come up with because it's these innovations that will drive the successful economies of the future. All of them are fundamentally interested in taking their ideas forward and realising them. Some have formed their own companies already and some are working with innovation hubs and investors in order to try and realise their ideas in commercial reality. The work here is about changing lives and the impact we have on the world around us. Bionet, for example, uses different densities of the same plastic to make one complex product, a concept shoe. And since it's made of one thing, it's much easier to recycle. It's a perfect mix of the commercial and the environmental. Simon McGregor Wood, Al Jazeera, London.